Drop me. Caught me wiping my nose. My face. Thank you, Lord. the victory no matter what no matter what victory is ours we are the children of God always have the victory not sometime all the time praise the Lord so today we are here we thank you Mary and Amy thank you Pat thank you Hannah I'm sorry we can't be on YouTube this evening. <clears throat> Hoping tomorrow we'll, we'll be back. Yeah, glory to God. So, so we are here and we're going to just allow the Lord to use us for his honor and for his glory. Chili, good evening. God bless you. <clears throat> I hope everybody could hear me well. As we're using another a different computer today because they don't want to fail again. So. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good evening, Dorothy. God bless you. I hope I can play this, this, this CD because I was having problem with it. But um, it's about your identity in Christ. So listen up and we'll come back and discuss it. God bless you. Listen up. I hope it's, I hope it's play, play all right. It's one of the dynamics of this season is the realization that uh, apart from Christ being raised from the dead, we could be raised from the dead. Not a person sitting in this room deserving of salvation. Not a one of us. All have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. And Christ came to give us his righteousness. That's a miracle, isn't it? You stop to think about this season. When all of the sins of the world were placed upon Jesus, no one will ever go to hell because of their sins. We've had pastor's bony fingers stuck in our face. Anyone listening, years, can you hear it? Just to say amen back, or something. Go to hell. Nothing could be farther from the truth. There is no man who will ever go to hell because of his sins. The only sin attributable to man is the sin of unbelief in the one who came to die for you and to live with you. That's it. And there's not a person on the face of this earth incapable of accepting that message. Thank you. There is no one on earth capable of living up to the standards of God. And so there's no man that is good enough to earn salvation, and there's no man bad enough to lose it. <laughs> it's just a gift. And we have had that message perverted so long <laughs> that the majority of people live under guilt. And they come to church on Easter hoping that the message isn't too strong so that I can at least enjoy part of the day. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that's not what this message is about the message is about that no one could ever earn salvation none of us we can't work for it we can't earn it you just accept it and that's why the Lord Jesus Christ said the world's sin singular is unbelief in me 
the sins of the world, plural, were all placed upon him 2,000 years ago at the cross. And there he who knew no sin became sin for you and me. So that in his resurrected life, we could become the righteousness of God. None of us are righteous in and of ourselves. Some people try to act it. They're not righteous, they're obnoxious. <laughs> righteousness is a gift from God. We just accept it. We may not look like it, but it's real. That today you and I stand, we're in Christ Jesus, in the righteousness of him. And one of these days we'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord, and there won't be one person in there saying, Lord, let me in because of how good I'm doing. <laughs> but Lord, let me in because of how good I'm doing. Now some people look at that message as a license. They say, oh, you're just teaching a license. You're teaching, giving people a license to sin. I don't need a license to sin. I sin quite well without one. Whether someone takes advantage of the message of grace or whether they don't does not negate grace. Amen. God came into this world and there died for the sins of the whole world. God entered into this world and there at the cross took away the sins of the entire world. There's not one sin that any man will or have ever committed that was not placed upon Jesus at the cross. So Amen. all have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God, but Jesus took them all. Having done that, he was ready now to give us life. And that life is available to anyone who will accept what Jesus did for them at the cross, merely saying, thank you, Lord, for what you did. And then recognizing our condition of spiritual death. Because all of us are born into this world dead spiritually. There's not a person alive that was ever born alive spiritually except one. And that's Jesus. That's why his virgin birth is not up for grabs. He was born alive. The only life available to be laid down for you and me. Was by the one and the only one who ever had life to lay down for you and me. And that was Jesus. Buddha can't give you life. He couldn't lay down his life for you. Muhammad couldn't. People want to argue over religions. It's not a religion. Jesus didn't come to form a religion. He came to form a relationship. <coughs> he came to give you life because you're dead. And so the only thing that we have to realize, and we studied that last week, how if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And there's the belief system, raised from the dead. While we were yet enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, that act totally accomplished, shall we be saved by his life. You're not saved by the death of Christ, you're saved by the life of Christ. What are you saved from? The wages, the consequence of sin, which is death. And you're saved by the gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And so the cross was necessary in order to take away the cause of spiritual death. For had he not taken away the cause of death, he could not have given us life eternal. But he chose in the mind of God to give life to us, called eternal life. That would begin the very moment we had the bearer of that life, and that's Christ Jesus. And so that's why it says that this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. And he who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son does not have life. So if you don't have the Son sitting here today, you're dead spiritually. That is good for you to know if you've never come to life. Because until I know I'm dead, why would I want life? Why would I seek life if I didn't know I was dead? And folks, apart from the Scripture, you wouldn't know you were dead. And you know you bounce prayers off the ceiling. You know that the lifestyle that you live is similar to that of Paul when he says the things I want to do I don't do and the things I don't want to do I do them anyway. But we can't figure out what the problem is. So many times we resort to self-improvement, positive thinking, go out and worship trees. I mean, you can get into all kinds of things that people are seeking to do to try to find this life because they know something's missing. For 36 years of my life, I knew something was missing. Yes. I didn't know what. Had not a clue. Because I went to church, especially on Easter and Christmas. And I took my kids to church, and I picked them up, too. 
I did all those things you're supposed to do. But I knew something was missing, and I didn't think, could not figure out what it was that was missing, and how many times I looked into a mirror and would see that thing staring back at me and say, Bob George, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and I didn't realize that the solution to my problem was as close as a prayer. It was as close as the day that a gentleman sat down with me and explained Jesus, and I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. My life changed that day. Going in one direction, Helder Skelter going 180 degrees in the other direction the next day. Picked up the Bible, it cracked. <laughs> I thought John 3.16 was a men's room on the third floor. I had no idea what was in this book, and I'd sat in church all my life. But I never had heard about a personal relationship with Jesus. <laughs> I'd heard about him, I believed in him, just like I believed in Abe Lincoln, George Washington, all those guys. I did not have a clue that Jesus died for me. I did not have a clue that the Bible called me a sinner. I knew I was a sinner, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what that meant. I thought a sinner was just someone who sinned, and I certainly know I did that. But the Bible says that no, a sinner is an unbeliever. Amen. A sinner is one who has never come to understand the truth of Jesus. And so, therefore, I stumbled in life, and I tried my best, but I couldn't live up to even my own standards, let alone God's. <laughs> and then that day came when I accepted Jesus. I walked away from that experience, and Amy and I drove back in California from Arrowhead Springs. I'm going to be going right back there this week. And I can remember saying to her as clear as it was yesterday, how many feel like someone took a scrub brush and scrubbed me all over? I had no idea I'd been cleansed. Didn't know a thing except the fact that something had happened that day. And that was that I'd been born again. Praise God. The greatest miracle that you and I will ever <laughs> experience in our life is new birth. All you see on television today are people getting healed. And I think to myself, what's wrong with you people? So you get healed, you're going to die. The permanent healing that man is looking for is spiritual healing, not physical. Amen. I'm going to get treatment. If I live, it's Christ. If I die, it's gain. Mm -hmm. And the greatest healing that I'll ever experience in my life is the day that I'm ejected out of this body and going to the presence of Jesus, seeing him as he Thank is, you. and knowing him as he is. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate healing. Yes. I mean, nothing more important than eternal life. You get it the minute you have the Son. Amen. It's a life that cannot be lost. And the reason it cannot be lost is because of the cross. The thing that caused death was sin. That thing was taken away at the cross. Taken away. Not covered. Taken away. Never to be seen again. You go to Christ today and say, Lord, did you see that sin? He said, no, I didn't. I took it away, Bob. You are a forgiven cleansed person if you're in Christ. That's grace. That's not law. It's not works. That's grace. And having been cleansed, I was now ready for life. I received life. And I had eternal life. Eternal life cannot be lost. If it could, call it, don't call it eternal life. Call it temporal life. Mm -hmm. But it can't be lost. And the reason it can't be lost is because of the cross. The thing that caused death has been eradicated. That's why you have eternal life. Is that good news? But early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw a stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb, and both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And he bent over and looked at the stripes of linen lying there, but he did not go in. And Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb, and he saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as a burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. And the cloth was folded up by itself separate from the linen. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, Gerald was studying the history of that time, and it was interesting that Jesus, as a carpenter, they said that a carpenter carried a cloth with them, and they would wipe the perspiration from their brow and other things. And at the close of the job, when the job was finished, they would fold this cloth mm -hmm. and leave it there with the sign, it's finished. Mm -hmm. The job's over. And he left his sweaty cloth there. And some people were saying that that is the significance of this cloth that was folded up. And it was folded in a certain way, as uniquely they would do so. And it was a sign, the job's over. It's finished. Now finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first uh, also went inside and he saw and it said he believed. They said they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. He had told them this, but folks, you can hear something and not know what something means, can't you? Amen. You know what it says, and unfortunately, most of us have put our faith in what it says instead of what it means. Mm -hmm. But when Peter and John went into that tomb and they saw that he was not there, they saw him placed there in the beaten condition that he was in and wrapped in all of the debris that they put them in at that time and all of the cloth that was wrapped, 70 some pounds worth. And all of a sudden that was gone. He was gone. Said they believed, they understood that sure enough, Jesus was raised from the dead. Amen. Just as he said he was going to be. He had said he was going to be raised from the dead before. They didn't know what that meant for sure. How could you? They'd never seen that. Amen. And so then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away. I don't know where they put him. <laughs> At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. Now, folks, that to me is a picture of a glorified body. The last time she saw Jesus, what was his condition? Beaten up. It says beaten. Mm -hmm. It's no man. His face would have been unrecognizable. And then he said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Mm -hmm. Who is it that you're looking for? And thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I'll give him. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Can you imagine the significance of that? There's something <laughs> in the way that a person pronounces your name that you can recognize who it is. And he said, Mary. Mm -hmm. And she cried out, Rabboni. Mm -hmm. means teacher. Amen. Jesus said to her, Don't hold on to me now, for I have not yet returned to the Father, but instead go to my brothers and tell them, mm -hmm. I'm returning to my Father and to your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news seen the Lord. Praise God. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, mm -hmm. and that by believing that you may have life in his name. Amen. We say, what is the significance of all this? We turn over to 1 Corinthians. He said, first of all, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you have received and on which you've taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you believed in vain. For what I passed on to you of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve, and after that he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some of them have fallen asleep. 
Then he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as the one abnormally born. The least of the apostles. But if it's preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, then how can some of you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? And if there's no resurrection from the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then he says, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. Do you see, folks, the centrality of the resurrection? Mm -hmm. The whole teaching was the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Yes. He says, more than that, we are found to be false witnesses. Jesus Christ claimed himself to be God. His apostles claimed himself to be God. And every one of you sitting in this room claim him to be God. We're either all a bunch of nuts, we're all deceived, or Jesus is God. Either the apostles had an encounter with Jesus, or they lied, or they were deceived. And either you have had an encounter with Jesus, or you lie, and you're deceived. You can talk about Jesus all you want, but for 2,000 years, men's hearts have been changed. And new life has been given to people of all walks of life and every all color and creed. Hallelujah. And lives have been changed for 2,000 years, testifying to the same thing. Jesus lives in me. Thank He's you, my hope of glory. You can go to Africa. <laughs> you can go to Brazil. You can go to India and talk to born-again believers, and the story is the same all over the world at the same time. Yes, it's just like there it is in the story we tell. People all talking about Jesus. Praise God. So the same thing was true here. If this is not true, then we're false witnesses about God. For we've testified about God that he raised Jesus from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. Mm -hmm. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you're still in your sins. Yes. One of the most important passages of Scripture in the Bible. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. What is our faith in, folks? It's in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why? Yes. It's through the resurrection that we receive life. And you don't have life until you come to understand his resurrection by faith. We're just playing at it. You're playing church. You're trying to make life click, and it won't click. You can keep trying and trying and trying and trying. It isn't going to work. You can go from bottle to bottle, mm -hmm. from man to man, <laughs> to woman to woman. You can have children. You can not have children. You can be married. You can be divorced. You can be single. And every one of those cases, you think, if I could only be what's something different than what I am, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. And you know better than that. All of you who are married know better than that. Yeah, man. <laughs> There's only one way for you and me to experience joy, and that's through the object of joy. We can get happiness temporary, but joy comes from God. And that's why there's a word unhappy, but there's no word unjoy. Because the source of joy comes from Jesus. So he says, if Christ had not been raised, your faith is futile, you're still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ, those who died prior to this, are lost. If for only this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied of all men. But Christ indeed has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, who was that? Who is, where did death come from? Adam. How many of you were born in Adam? All of us. How many of you were born dead in Adam? All of us. So since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes through also through a man. Who's that? Through Jesus. For as in Adam we all die, so in Christ we will all be made alive. But each in his own turn. Christ the first to be raised, the first fruits, that was the apostles, and then, when he comes, those who belong to him. But someone may ask, well, how are the dead raised? What kind of a body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. Until a seed falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone, doesn't it? 
But when you sow, you don't plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps Amen. a seed or something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives his own body. All flesh is not the same. Men have one kind of flesh, animals another, birds another, fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly body is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly body is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, the stars another, and the stars differ from star in its splendor. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown perishable gets raised imperishable. You and I will be sown into the ground. <laughs> These old bodies of ours someday, you know, we got all kind of a mix in here. We got young bodies. We got medium bodies. We got some old bodies. <laughs> They're all going to go to the grave sometime. It just got hit. It just went. It's going to be sown perishable, but it's going to be raised imperishable. Thank you. It's sown in dishonor. There's nothing honorable. We try to make corpses honorable. We dress them up, put a best suit on them. <laughs> People walk by and look them down and say, looking good. <laughs> looking good, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> but we dress them up, try to make corpses look good. But it's not. It's sown in dishonor, but it's raised in glory. Praise There's nothing God. honorable about a corpse. It's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness. It's raised in power. It's sown a natural body, that's you and me, and it's raised a spiritual body. What kind of a body are we going to have when we go spiritual. get out of here? A spiritual body or a natural body? Spiritual. A spiritual body. Does flesh and blood ever inherit the kingdom of God? No. Nope. No. What is our flesh and blood? It's natural. Is it ever going to inherit the kingdom of God? No. God's going to give us a spiritual body. This thing's a seed. Goes into the ground, dies, something else comes up. Aren't you glad? <clears throat> yeah, because I said, the older you get, these old bodies of ours are sagging and bagging, and they're heading toward a grave, aren't they? So you look at that. You say, well, it's sown a natural body, but it's raised a spiritual body. Now, if there is a natural body, he's trying to explain this to us, there's also a spiritual body. Have any of you ever seen a spiritual body? No. no, but do we know there's going to be one? <clears throat> yes. And we know something about that spiritual body that it's going to resemble somewhat this natural body. Now, when when is it going to represent it? Is it going to look like it did when you died or when you were 16? <laughs> Which would you prefer? 16. <laughs> <laughs> But it's going to be a spiritual body, and it's going to be one that's given to us by Jesus. Things are going to be pretty good. It's a crippled, going to be sown, a crippled body, and raised, a crippled spiritual body? No. No, it's something God's going to give us. Yes. It's written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The mm -hmm. spiritual did not come first, but the natural. Now, that's what it means, when unless you're born of water, naturally, and the spirit, that's spiritual, You'll never enter into the kingdom of God. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. So the natural comes first. In other words, you were not born spiritually before you were born naturally. <laughs> now that kind of alleviates spirit children in heaven coming down to get their bodies. Mm -hmm. As is taught in some religious form. Mm -hmm. You were born physically. And when you're born again, you're born spiritually. After that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. Who was that? Adam, Adam, the second man from heaven. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. So just as we were born in Adam, so are us who are born of the earth. And as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are from heaven. So as he became, we will become as well. Yes. And just as we have been born in the likeness of the earthly man, fleshly, we shall bear the likeness of the man from heaven, spiritually. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. There is nothing in this body of ours that's going to go into the presence of God, contrary to what some people want to think. There are people who have books out teaching about how this Bible, you know, if this, this 
God's going to come along with his heavenly vacuum cleaner and suck us up and make a new body out of us. It's ludicrous. In the first place, when you and I die, we get our spiritual body immediately. Amen. Until the rapture, it comes immediately. Absent from we the get body. A spiritual body. Present. We don't have a home Pretty here hard. on earth and die and become homeless. Mm -mm. We have a body, and it's a spiritual body. It's sown in disgrace, it's raised in honor. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God will not accept flesh and blood, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. So he said, listen, I'm going to tell you a mystery. We're not all going to sleep. Now, what does it mean, sleep? No. Right. But we will all be changed. We, we put that on a sign at the nursery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> in a flash and a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Now, when is your last trumpet going to be? Yeah, you die. When you die. That's going to be my last one. Mm -hmm. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe himself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Amen. What happens when we die? It's swallowed up in victory. Amen. It's swallowed up by life. Oh, death. So, oh, death, where is your victory? Mm -hmm. No death, where is your sting? Mm -hmm. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Praise God. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brother, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not, is in, vain. not in vain. Folks, this is a marvelous message, isn't it? It tells us of the resurrection of Christ, and it tells us what's going to happen to us. Many of you have lost loved ones, mm -hmm. your mother, your father. If you haven't yet, you will. I've said to many times to take a look next to you, to your wife and to your husband, because one of these days you'll be looking into a grave, and looking one of you will be looking at the other one unless you're fortunate enough to die one time. <laughs> That's part of life. It has to be so. Now to us, we look at those things as tragic because if we're the one left, why then there's a period of loneliness that takes place. Now where's the sting of death in that? What eliminates that sting of death? This foreknowledge that this loved one of yours has gone into the presence of Jesus. My mom, my dad, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, other brother-in-law, yeah. nephews, they're in the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, you would say to yourself, well, as much as you miss them, if you could call them back, would you? No Some people say, well, maybe. Think about it. Call them back to this pig pen that we live in? <laughs> no way. They're in the presence of Jesus. Never to see Thank sin again. you, Lord. Never to see death again. Never to see hard times again. Never to see all of the things that we go through, the tragedies, the heartaches. None of those things. And you say, would you call them back? Say, no. Not in a million years. Mm -hmm. I'll just wait till I can go see them. Amen. If you had a loved one that said that you're, you're being sentenced to live in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a sentence. Got to call them back. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd look forward to going to see them. Yeah. But you wouldn't call them back. I we like are that. blessed people. I like that. When you realize what Jesus came to do for us and what mm -hmm. this season celebrates is that time of the year when in Jerusalem a man named Jesus of Nazareth, who mm -hmm. had proclaimed himself for some three years to be God, walked on this earth and then became <laughs> sin for us. Yes died on a cross, was buried, and on the third day raised from the dead so that you and I could be raised from the dead. Why did he die? To take away your sins. 
Why did he save himself? Because had he saved himself, he couldn't have saved you. Yes. Why was he willing to say, Father, if there's any way to save these people apart from why having to become sin, do it. And yet it's not my will, but yours be done. <laughs> All of this is a part of a plan of God. Thank you. A marvelous plan of God whereby he could bring redemption to his creation that Satan thought he had destroyed eternally. And through his resurrection, you and I can be raised from the dead. Now, folks, at this time of the year, as with any time of the year, you do not know where people are. All of you. <coughs> but I don't know where you are spiritually any more than anyone knew where I was spiritually some 33 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I want us to take a few moments to ponder some things in our own lives. If you're here today and are not 100% sure that if you drop dead right now that you would go into the presence of God, then I've got good news for you. If you are not 100% sure that you have eternal life, a life that can never be lost or destroyed, then I also have good news for you. Yes. If you've bounced prayers off of the ceiling, and you know that there's a God there, but you don't know who he is, and you have no relationship with him. We have good news for you. You don't have to remain that way. Amen. As I said, I went for 36 years of my life searching for everything, not knowing I was searching for God. And so today, what I want us to do is this. I want you to think for a moment do I believe that there was a Jesus of Nazareth on this earth who walked this earth for some 30 years and who claimed himself to be God and went to a cross and died for the sins of the whole world? Became the perfect Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Do you believe that? Do you know what it means? That he died for your sins. Not a historical effect that Jesus died, but he died for you. If hey, you were the man. only person on the he face of the earth, us. he died for you. <laughs> and took away your sins. Having done that, and having been buried, which is the proof of death, on the third day he was raised from the dead. And he was raised from the dead... So that that life that raised him from the dead can raise you and me from the dead because we too were born dead. Everyone born dead, spiritually. And the only thing that a dead person needs is life. It is not get good enough. Or as some people will say, I think I've out sinned the grace of God. No, you have not. You've tried. But you've out and sinned the grace of God. There's no person alive that has sinned enough to miss the grace of God. I have people will say, well, Powerful. I got back out in the world and so I stopped coming to church. Man, if anyone ought to be learning, it's people who are back out in the world. You don't walk away. Yeah. You see, faith says, I have faith in this Jesus to do what he does in the midst of whatever I do. Hallelujah. You cannot sin the grace of God before you are saved, and you cannot sin him afterwards. Grace is grace. Hallelujah. And so if you realize, or if you are aware of the fact that you have never, ever accepted life, the life of Jesus, into your heart, then I'm going to ask you to do that today. To make this a memorial Easter where on the day that Jesus was raised, I too was raised. I identified myself with him in his death, and I identified myself with him in his resurrection. And today, I came alive. You can do that today, and your life will be changed. Christ Jesus has promised to as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become a child of God. How do you become a child of God? You receive him. I'm not asking anybody in here to become a people of people. 
-hmm. or a Baptist or a Presbyterian or a Methodist. Those are all man-made organizations. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to become a child of God. Child of God. Let's pray together. Father, as our hearts are turned toward your provision, and we have come to understand our condition of spiritual death, it's now decision time. Do we want to go on in our life struggling in our condition of spiritual death or do we want life? I'm not asking anyone to repent of our sins mm -hmm. but to repent of the one sin that is attributable to man and that's the sin of unbelief. To change your mind. You may have walked into this room believing about Jesus but not knowing. Mm -hmm. Today you can know him. And if that is the heart's desire of anyone here today, then will you, in your heart, just say, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. Thank you for taking away my sins at the cross. I now ask you to come into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Father, we thank you for these that have come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Thank you for being a child, making us into children of the living God. Thank you for this time of year that is so precious to all of us. The time that we can celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for these, our brothers and sisters in Christ, for their faithfulness, for their love for their charity. I just thank you for them. I love them all and thank God for them. We pray all of these things and thank you for all of these blessings that you've given us. In Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Praise the Lord, friends. Here we go. There we have it. Proper message message that is powerful to anyone that listening today even if you are born again and if you know you are lost amen it's a two way message right there amen <clears throat> like the one um, he died for me you gotta in, um, personalize it he died for me he died for you you gotta put your name there and, and when he died, he took away your sin on the cross. Amen. With the purpose of you, giving, giving you life. Amen. So all you have to do now is to accept life. And even though you accept, if you accepted Christ before, and you don't know that you, it's the life of Christ, you just you could make sure that this is what, what happened. A lot of people don't know. That is the life of Christ that living in them. Christ in me, my only hope of glory. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27. Read it yourself. Amen. John 10. I think it's John 10 10. He said, The thief come to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. For God so loved the world, God so loved you, He loved me. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have life, everlasting, everlasting life. Okay. <laughs> it comes down to the life of Christ. Amen. Why we need life? Because we were born dead because of Adam. Amen. So that at, the, at the cross, Jesus, according to the explanation of the, this message, at the cross, Jesus. Christ took away our sins but there is one sin that has to be corrected amen one sin that has you and me has to repent of the sin of unbelief in Jesus there's everybody this morning today have 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 the opportunity to, to re receive Jesus Christ repent of that sin and, and turn to him I did many years ago I repented of my unbelief in Jesus and 
be saved Christ amen but knowing now knowing that he he is alive living me make it so much better for my Christian life my my life is never be the same when I start understanding the life of Christ in me which is my only hope of glory because thank God this evening for Bob George thank God for all of you that are here we thank God for even though if you are new on the on, the, on this program we are here every day every, every day friend every day sharing the good news of the gospel helping our brothers and sisters to be enlightened in the truth of God's word not just really there's no religion here we are here Jesus plus nothing but Jesus only Jesus friend like the same song singer the songwriter said only Jesus only Jesus amen I can't sing so I can I'm not gonna sing it <laughs> amen praise the Lord we got them all the view here today praising the Lord praising the Lord God bless you friends amen thank God all, all of us that are here we praise the Lord for you <laughs> thank you thank you Jesus I had some setback this evening before I get on but I tell you I persevere, persevere. amen so we got to be on the devil is a liar no matter what he tries he tried to pre prevent me many times but I have the victory you know what greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world hallelujah Jesus is alive living in me I know that friend I know the Bible says these things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life and this life is in his son he that have the son have life he that have not not the son of God do not have life and you have the son you have all father son and holy spirit alive living in you which is our only hope of glory so we thank you and he always make a way he always he always <laughs> always make a way so tomorrow evening we hope we be back again again we'll have him um, able to do live and and um, youtube tomorrow i hope <laughs> And when my son will will update this video on, on YouTube later on this evening. So we thank you. Today is the first of March. March the first, twenty twenty one. <laughs> Glory to God. Man, it's just keep on going. Going and going. Amen. This is a message for the Easter, but it doesn't matter, you know. That's that's that what happened because the water or the message I was going to share, I had it stuck in, the, in my other computer and I couldn't delete it. So I couldn't get it out to put it on this computer because the um, computer froze up. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to have it the next time, the continuation of what we had on, I think it was Saturday. So we're going to have it the next time. But it's, it's all good, you know, it's all good. It all, it all is the Word of God. All is the word of God, and who knows? Somebody, somebody needed to hear this message today. Somebody needed to be. In, <coughs> somebody need to be encouraged. Amen. I'm, I need to be encouraged. I need to be aware. You know, repetition, friend. Can you cannot stop that? It's a, it's a over and over, repeating ourselves, knowing, in knowing our mind with truth that set us free. Amen. That's the only thing that's going to set us free. Not legalism. Not bondage messages. Messages that keep the motivation that keep you in bondage. That's all you all you hear all day for most of it. Is that you, that's all you hear. A motivation speaker. No, God called you as a child of God. If you are a minister of the gospel, to, to minister the, the message of reconciliation. The message to encourage God's people to grow in the grace of God in the knowledge of him amen and who they are identity 
identity is 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 important you know why our young people so today are was raised in the in the in the so-called organization the so-called church different denomination and today they they are they don't know who they are because nobody taught them you know why nobody taught them and many of the preachers do not even know for themselves so you cannot let me tell you friend i know that i've been around i've been saved 40 47 august will be 48 years i've been saved a long time so amen you know, no many of them many of the preachers many of the people went to bible school college went to university have degrees amen but do not know for themselves who they are in christ so how could you preach what you don't know yeah how could you preach what you don't know you got to be taught by who by the spirit of god not by not by the professors most of the professors are lost anyway most of the professors are not saved when you allow the holy spirit to teach you friends you you will get it you will get it if you if you're sitting there today and you're struggling to get the message allow the holy spirit to do it for you because if you are born again the holy spirit that lay is alive living in you christ came and living you that's what being born again is we are born of the spirit of god you see we are born of religion so allow the holy spirit to teach you yeah that you study the word of god paul said to timothy his 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 son in the gospel he said study to show thyself approve unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly rightly dividing the word of truth the word of truth need to be divided today brethren and sisters amen not not motivation speakers there's too many of that in the in the in the body of christ too many of that motivation you go on on facebook you go on youtube and you go on t well i don't watch tv so i can't tell you about it anymore but i used to listen to watch tv same thing motivation speakers telling you and that's why they're getting rich they're getting rich off of, off of you amen and because because you you so thinking oh this is a man of god oh man you have the same holy spirit in you the same holy spirit so don't allow people to to, to teach you error when the whole when the when you hear error the holy spirit living in you will tell you this is error error and if you if you hear what we are saying here to, and, and freedom in christ ministry and you're hearing it and you're saying well you, you have doubt go and study the word for yourself open the bible for yourself and allow the holy spirit to teach you amen it wouldn't be my fault it would be your fault because you did not do according to what god wants you to do god wants to teach you truth jesus said that the truth of my word will set you free amen not what preachers tell you amen i'm, I'm kind of hard on that tonight because because it's too much of that going on too much too much religion going on and the people that never never come to christ they never they are not hearing the word of god the the message of grace the message of that G, that paul preached paul said the message that we have heard if you another man that's in galatian one he said if another man preach another gospel let him be eternally condemned amen let him be a cause Amen. Amen. The guy, he turned to the Galatians and said, hey, hey, brothers and sisters, who has bewitched you? What is bewitch? Huh? Who spell, put a spell on you that you would not believe the truth? Amen. You, you know? So, you, 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 every one of us fought. Every one of us that stays in bondage. When you hear the truth, friend, because you have the Holy Spirit in you, you open up to the Holy Spirit and ask God to teach you the meaning of the scripture. You can read the scripture every single day from, from Genesis to Revelation and you, 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 you will just read it like that. You will know what the Bible says, but you don't know the meaning of it. The meaning of it has to be taught by the Holy Spirit. Have to be taught by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you all. No, is it some truth? Says in John, first John, 
the Spirit of God, of God will teach you all truth and is no lie. Thank you. Father, we thank you for all my friends and my brothers and sisters in Christ today. Those of us that are here, we pray and those of us that will watch this video, this, this message, the message about the cross, about, about Jesus Christ. We are presenting only Christ. Jesus plus nothing. Not Jesus plus plus communion. Not Jesus plus baptism. Not Jesus plus nothing. Jesus and Jesus only. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Some heavy wind outside. <laughs> Amen. So we thank God for all and we praise the Lord for all of you. We love you and we will see you tomorrow evening. Same time, same place, 7.15. Amen? Eastern Standard Time. God bless you. I love you. And you know that God love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye-bye.